So this is a collaboration with the with Jaehun Sim and Lee Dong Lee and Sung Yap Jung and Il Gwon Gang and Jin Su Kim from Seoul National University. So let me start my presentation with a short story of how this work actually started in the beginning. So we went back to 2080. So we were evaluating a Kibelu SSD. So in evaluation, we found that the each Kibelu operation is processed independently according to the MVMA standard, and it incurs a high interfacing overhead, considering the small size of the key and values. We thought, what if we can gather multiple key value pairs in a single command, and that way, we can not only reduce the interface overhead, but also we can give some rich semantics, such as transactions on those multiple key values in the, in the same, same command. So to realize this idea, we had a look at the entire key value IO stack, and we found that we can change or modify whatever we want, but accept the KVSSD format. So as the device was provided by a company as an evaluation prototype, so we cannot access nor modify its code or its format as we want. So I believe maybe some other researchers have the similar issues when you are working on the leading technologies in the system. So this motivates us to think about using an emulator for our research so that we can easily implement and, and implement and evaluate the idea in software. So however, SUNY found that there is a huge dilemma in using uh, emulator. So as implemented in software, emulators can facilitate the advanced storage research by showing the by, by, sorry, by evaluating various device concepts without having a real run. So for the example, these are the one uh, newly proposed in the last decades, and you may find that some of them are still not available in the retail shop. But with the emulator, you can start the real research right away without having these devices. But once you may find, you might be very frustrated when you are trying to use this emulator in a little bit different configurations than you expect. So let me take, talk about these situations in the following slides. So many emulators are actually, emulated, actually implemented as a device driver in the operating system. So showing a virtual device to the applications by catching IO requests and processing them. So this approach has an inherent limitation because of its location in the system. So emulation take place in the operating system so it can only process the regular operations that are coming down through the IO stack of the operating system. So it's obvious that it cannot support some user-driven IO, for example. So many applications try to act, nowadays try to access the storage directly without going through the entire stack. So when the emulator is implemented at the device, device driver, this IO model cannot be supported. Also, there is an increasing demand for the device-driven IO, such as RDMA or PCI P2P DMAs, so that the device try to access the, deep, access the storage directly without going through the entire kernel. So these device-driven approaches cannot support these cases neither. So the other popular way of, of building the emulator is to use the virtual machine, host virtualization, so in this case, the hypervisor actually emulated the virtual devices exposed to the operating system. But yeah, so in this case, fortunately, we can, this approach can support the user-driven IO, but still, it cannot support the device-driven IO yet, because there is no way to contact the virtual device presented in the guest. So also, this complicated memory layout in the virtual machines makes the RDMA almost infeasible in these cases. Also, there is another big downside of these approaches, which is the virtualization overhead. So every request goes through this virtualization technology, virtualization layer, so it incurs a high overhead that actually limits or impact on, on the performance characteristic of the emulation target device. So we present the MVME BERT. So it's, a, it's actually a lightweight kernel module that present on virtual MVME device, and that MVME device is 
seems to be native to the entire systems so that so from the operating system's perspective, it's just like this, this situation, configuration like in the figure. So this can support the RDMA and PCP, PCI PCP and kernel bypassing, and it can also support the various storage device types, such as the conventional SSD and NVMe SSD and GN SSD and KV SSD for now. So to make this happen, we have to resolve two, two issues in here. So the first thing is that how can we create a virtual PCI device instance in the system? First thing. So when we use the so when we use a real device, actually the device initiate the initialization so that the device can make the device driver on the host can make the instance for that. But I see. Yeah. So, yeah. so the NVMe device is supposed to present its, its so-called PCIe configuration header to the host, and the host will see its in internal and in create the instance according to its description. But however, we don't have the actual device at hand, so there is no, so we don't have the physical device that can actually initiate this initialization. And maybe we can hack into the Linux kernel to create some instance at our own way, but we don't want to mess up with the existing PCI, so PCI subsystem implementation in there. So we actually make the PCI device instance indirectly through the PCI bus. So Linux kernel allows to define a virtual PCI bus, and by, by using that feature, we can present a PCI configuration header of the target virtual device without having it to run. So this requires no modification in the existing kernel. The next challenge is that we, uh, we cannot rely on the PCI mechanism anymore to detect the request from the host side. So in, when we use the real devices, the PCI, PCI, sorry, the PCI device actually asked the PCI root complex to map its part of memory to the host's address space. So when the host or device driver writes some data on that area, that write is translated into the PCI transaction and delivered to the device. And now the device can sense that request and process. And also it can respond to that request by writing the data and in the PCI transaction, and that is applied to the host's memory side, and the host device driver can sense that as well. But however, we don't have actual device at hand, so just write to those, these control block or doorbells are just silently applied without causing any transactions. So we have to, to resolve these issues, we have to dedicate a thread that keeps scanning these control blocks and doorbells and to find any update so this thread is so-called dispatcher, and dispatcher actually check the control blocks and doorbells and to find any update. And if find there is some configuration request, such as enable or disable device or device query or administration queue pair setup, and it process in there. But it, the IO requests are handled a little bit different way. So dispatcher actually check, know that the user user ask some question by check, by detecting the update in the doorbell, and the request I request is now dispatched, and now dispatcher it is dispatcher actually divide that request into smaller backend operation according to the configured backend type. For example, when the backend is configured for the just FTA, sorry, the flash memory SSD, these requests are translated into the FTL operations, like read page write or page read and so on. And while doing that, this dispatcher actually attach timestamps on those backend operations and so that it can track the progress and it know the time to make a completion for that. And these backend operations are dispatched to the 
a number of threads, so-called IO workers. And this actually, IO worker actually moved the data from the, from the IO request buffer to the actually data storage in our system. So MVME bolt actually stored the data in the main memory. And we used the RDMA, uh, sorry, we use the DMA engine for this movement. Because we, when the data, user data, sorry, the IO request data is on the main memory, we can just move the main copy easily. But when, but when the device in, make this request, the request payload is on the device's memory. And if we move data using just main copy, it will generate a lot of PCI transactions to so the memory movement is not very fast. So to handle that issue, we use the DMA engine to move data. So after moving those data, and this IO worker check the completion, expected completion time, and if the work clock passed that expected time, it make a completion through the IPI and MSI interrupt vector so that the requester will notify of the completion. So to make, to divide the IO request into backend operations, the MVM world provides two simple models for, for now. So the first one is a simple model that just divide the input into chunks and process, just move the data and impose some delay on them. But we want to do, incorporate some more advanced performance model in there. So, so -called, we so -called call it the parallel model for conventional SSD. So it's a full scale page map FTL with the garbage collection. So we model the on-device write buffer and the parallel architecture that is widely used in modern SSD. So there are, we can deploy multiple FTL instances in there and you can model the multiple channels and multiple dies and multiple plane and multiple chips in there which are competing for the uh, one sharing PCI link in that system. So more details are in the paper. So we, this make uh, about 9,000 lines of Linux kernel code and we implemented in it and we evaluate the using a Numa, a Numa machine. So we, I, we run during the evaluation, we run the application on Numa core one, uh, sorry, Numa node one, zero, and we run the all the MVM world dispatcher and I workers on the other process so that, the, so that they do not interfere with each other. So we used the four, the four real devices for evaluation. As the conventional SSD, we use the Samsung 970 Pro. And as the MVM SSD, we use the Intel Octane SSD. Also, we use the Samsung KB SSD and the GN SSD prototype provided by some of our research, research partner. So first we show the emulation quality of MVME BERT. So this graph shows the distribution of the percentile for 10 random write runs. So the error bar indicates the standard deviation for that percentile, and so that the longer error bar indicates the higher performance fluctuation in there. So from the real device, you can see the expected result that the MVM SSDR performs the conventional SSD in this case, and the conventional SSD show a little bit higher performance variation than the MVM SSD. We, so we measure the performance variation from the one of the best, one of the mostly widely used the emulator, so-called FEMU, and FEMU actually show a very long tail latency, tail latency and high run by run performance fluctuation as shown in this graph. So you can see that the fluctuation is so significant that we think that FEMU would not be able to consistently emulate the high-performing MVM SSD in this case. So, but as the MVM BERT does not rely on the virtualization technology at all, this provides a very clean and low latency with a little performance variation. So we also compare the, we make, a, we tuned our model so that they can model the performance of real devices, as shown in here. So we, we measure, the, we compare the performances of the real device and our body instances. And this is the uh, performance of the real devices in here. And we, we can, our board can actually replicate the real devices performance very closely so that the harmonic means of the performance difference is only 1.17%. We also 
evaluate the performance characteristics compared to the real devices. So this so we analyze the distribution of latency and the impact of DC and the performance propagation while we are running some complicated workload. And this is the performance characteristic of real devices and now BERT can and almost both can successfully imitate all those characteristics as shown in these graphs. So as a case study, we use, using this MVM work, we do some case studies. So there are many case studies on the paper, but I will just introduce one, one case study here. So that is the we measure, evaluate two representative database engines, which is the MariaDB and Postgres SQLs. So we, actually, so we can configure the MVMS instance to give, a, to give some maximum bandwidth at a given point. So as you can see, we give, set the MVMS instance to give 2,500 megabyte bandwidth or up to 3,000 megabyte, 3,000 megabyte per second bandwidth. And you can see this MariaDB can only utilize a small bandwidth lower than five, 500 megabytes per second. And in contrast, the Postgres SQL can utilize uh, very high bandwidth. So it show a higher performance at the, high, the wide bandwidth, but the MariaDB outperforms the Postgres SQL and the, the lower bandwidth storage. So I think that's it. So, so so we, in this, so we present the MVMe board, which is your virtual MVMe devices, and it actually supports all the modern storage configuration and device types. So including the kernel bypassing and PCI P2P and RDMA and so on. Also it supports the conventional SSD, MVMe SSD and GN SSD and KB SSD and we are implementing other things as well for now. All the code are available in the GitHub, so if you have any interest, please try this one. So thanks, thanks for taking the presentation. I'm ready to take the question.